If you have a website but you're not analysing its performance, or you are but you're a bit lost amongst all of the different reports in Google Analytics, then let me give you a helping hand. Hello and welcome to Vitamin BI, bringing you business intelligence for beginners and beyond. My name's Adam and on this channel I show you that you don't need to be a data scientist or have a huge budget to get started in BI. So if that's something you're interested in learning more about, then don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get notified when I upload new videos. Okay, so let's dive into the video. First off, what is Google Analytics? Google Analytics is a web analytics service offered by Google that lets you track and analyze your website's traffic. It's a free to use tool that you can install by copying and pasting a few lines of code into your website. Then it starts to record visit and visitor data. What pages are visited, for how long, that kind of thing. There are actually dozens upon dozens of metrics and dimensions available to help you analyze your website's performance. And in the Google Analytics interface, you have lots of handy pre-packaged reports to make the task easier. They're great, but the problem is that each website is unique, which those reports don't necessarily take into account. However, with a little understanding of the most important metrics and dimensions, you'll be able to create your own dashboards and reports focused on your specific website, either inside Google Analytics or outside of it using a different analytics tool that will help you to make sense of your website's traffic. Before we jump into talking about the important metrics and dimensions you should be tracking, it's important that you understand the concept of intent. That's to say, visitor intent. Most visitors, when they land on your website, are there for a specific purpose. Whether it's to find out information, to look for a product or service, to sign up for something, schedule an appointment, etc, etc. So whether your website is achieving its goals or not doesn't depend simply on the number of visits it receives. It depends on how well the intent of the visitor is served, whether they manage to do what they came to your site to do. You might think it's difficult to figure out what the visitor's intent was, but it's actually easier than you might think. I'll talk more about how to analyse for intent later on. OK, let's start by looking at some of the important metrics available for measuring the success of your website. Firstly, on their own as KPIs, and secondly, in conjunction with some relevant dimensions to help you dig deeper into the data. First off, we have visits and visitors that Google calls sessions and users. Good for measuring overall traffic. But what might be more useful are the metrics new users, so the number of users visiting for the first time, and number of sessions per user, which is total sessions divided by total users. This last one is good for measuring whether people tend to visit your site more than once. If you have a blog, for example, this might be a good KPI to measure, because the more sessions per user means the more people come back to read more blog posts. So all of these metrics are great for measuring overall traffic. But what about more detailed metrics for measuring what people do once they land on your site? Well, you could measure bounce rate, which is the rate of single page visits to your site. So the user arrives and bounces straight off again from the same page. You might be thinking that this sounds like quite a good metric to track, and it is, but not in all cases. For example, some websites only have one page, perhaps just one long sales page. The bounce rate here is redundant because there's nowhere else for the user to go. Another situation where bounce rate might not be very useful is when you're driving users to a particular page in order for them to carry out a specific action, say to sign up for a newsletter, and then they're not directed to a different page afterwards. Or perhaps the page you're driving them to doesn't have any links to other pages on it. In these cases, the expected behaviour is that the user only visits one page, so bounce rate is always going to be 100% or thereabouts for these pages, which is obviously going to impact the overall website bounce rate. So as you can see, not so straightforward. My advice is to only measure bounce rate for specific pages where it makes sense to do so. Talking about tracking page performance, 
Other than bounce rate, there are different metrics that you can use. Firstly, you have the basic page views metric, which is the number of times each page is loaded by users. But I tend to prefer unique page views, which only counts a page being loaded once in every session, simply because I think it gives a more accurate picture of how much content on my website is being consumed. Just because the same user loads the same page twice on the same session doesn't necessarily mean that they're spending time consuming the same content twice. I'd prefer to know that the user has consumed the page at all, rather than how many times. Besides, you have the time on page metric to help you understand how long people spend on a page. What I also like to measure is the number of pages per session, also known as page depth. Again, this will only be relevant where your website has several pages, but it can help you see how engaging your website is for users. Another metric for measuring engagement is average time on page. However, this is another one similar to bounce rate in that there's a big caveat. Basically, time on page is measured as the time between when the user lands on the page and then when they load the next page. However, like with single page websites, the user has nowhere else to go, so can't load another page on your website, which means that time on page can't actually be measured at all. That's right, time on page is only calculated for sessions of more than one page view. So do bear this in mind. The same problem actually occurs for session duration, which is calculated as the time between the first and last time that the tracking code is fired for each user. So if the user loads the page they land on and then leaves without doing anything else that triggers the tracking code, the session duration won't be calculated. So again, use with caution. There are more advanced ways that you can better track things like time on page and session duration. It's done by setting up things called events that trigger the tracking code when something specific happens. One I like to use is called scroll depth that you can set to fire when the user scrolls past specific points on a page. But this is a bit more advanced than the basics we're focusing on in this video. Just know that there are workarounds. Okay, so now that we've explored some of the key metrics that you might want to track, now let's talk about some dimensions you can use to break them down and really get a more accurate picture of website performance. One of the most important things you'll want to track is where your website visitors are coming from, also known as traffic source. And you also have the medium dimension that tells you whether the visitor arrived via organic search, paid search, referral, email, etc. But if you don't want to get that detailed about the individual sources and mediums, Google kindly provides another dimension called default channel grouping which gives you handy combinations of different sources and mediums. It's a great place to start, and if you want to dig deeper, you can. You might also want to track where your visitors live, and Google Analytics has lots of geographic dimensions to choose from, from continent all the way down to longitude and latitude of the user's city based on their IP address. Depending on your business or website, you might not think that where users live is that important, and perhaps it isn't. However, you can use this data to filter out visits from countries that might look suspicious. For example, you might run a store in a specific town, but you're getting way too many visits from a town like Kathmandu, and they're loading every page on your website. In cases like these, there's usually something dodgy going on. So what you can do is filter out users from Kathmandu from your analytics to give you a more accurate picture of your user data. I'll talk more about filtering and segmentation in a minute, but before I do, let's talk about page tracking dimensions, which are some of the most useful. After all, it's pretty important to know what pages users visit and their journey through your website. First up, we have the basic page dimension which is the full URL that comes after your domain name. But depending on how your website has been set up, you may prefer to use page title, which is the name given to the page. This might be easier to read, but the page title always remains the same, whereas the page URL might contain some useful tracking information, so something to bear in mind. 
One dimension that, for me, is crucial to track and analyze is called landing page. It's the first page in a session where the user landed on your site. With landing page, it's important to measure bounce rate, especially in cases where you might expect the user to go from that page to another page. You then have the second page dimension that you can use in conjunction with landing page to see where people go to, if anywhere, once they land on your site. I talked earlier about intent, and this can give you an idea of what a user's intent is, especially when looking at your home page. If the about page is the second page, they're probably looking for information about your business. If the second page is your contact page, then they're there to contact you, etc. Those are just a couple of examples. Obviously, every website is different, but it gives you some ideas for measuring the performance of specific pages. As well as landing page and second page, which are set for each session, you also have the next page, which will tell you which page was visited next when you use it in conjunction with, for example, the second page, or indeed the regular page dimensions. One final page dimension you might want to track is exit page. This tells you what the last page of a user's session was. Perhaps you're driving people to a specific page to complete a task that will redirect them to, say, a thank you page. You could then see how many people landed on the first page and exited on the second. This kind of thing could also be tracked by setting up goals and events in Google Analytics. That's out of the scope of this video, but if you're interested in finding out how to do this, then let me know in the comments below and maybe I can do a new video on it. The last thing I want to talk about is also something that you can set up via the Google Analytics interface, and that's segments. Segments are like filters that you can use to create subsets of users or sessions. Earlier, I gave the example of unexplained visits from an unexpected country. In this case, you could use a segment to exclude users or sessions from that country, so that you're only analyzing good traffic. So segments are really useful tools. I definitely think you should at least play around with them and see whether you can learn anything from these subsets of your data. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please hit that like button to feed the algorithm and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get notified when I upload new videos. I'm also always looking for new ideas for content, things that you'd like to learn more about when it comes to business intelligence or working with data. Perhaps I could do a dashboard build along video for Google Analytics. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay BI curious.